One evening last week, I found myself standing in front of an open refrigerator, looking, searching, anything to eat. Now, I was not physically hungry. I had finished a dinner not long before, a very satisfying meal. I was emotionally hungry and I needed to be comforted. Has that ever happened to you? Looking back over the day, it was a tough day for me. I had gotten a new Great Dane Foster, um, Fred, which is usually a very joyful day, but it also got me thinking about the 18 years that I have been fostering Great Danes and my last foster, my 49th foster, George, um, had some medical issues and he passed away earlier this summer. So yeah, I was sad, I was a bit emotional and I chose to indulge. Now, I'm a health and a wellness coach, a dietitian, but you know, I just wanted you to know that, um, yeah, I'm not perfect, I'm human. Fortunately though, I do have other coping skills um, to help me through situations like that. Essentially, there are two types of hunger. There is the emotional hunger that I just um, referenced, um, which I'll get to in a moment. And then there is the physical hunger, and it usually uh, manifests itself in, in the belly, this uncomfortable sensation or this gnawing that you might feel indicating a lack of food. And that is ideally the time to eat when you're truly hungry. It's usually not instigated by any um, thoughts or emotions, um, cravings or compulsions. It's just the body saying, yoo-hoo, it's time to eat. I want you to think of physical hunger as a belly hunger, as opposed to head hunger or above the neck hunger. That is um, the emotional hunger that you might experience. Often it comes on very suddenly, um, despite any sense of satisfaction or satiety that you might be feeling, um, totally unrelated to the last time you ate. Um, emotional hunger manifests in many ways, when you're glad, when you're sad, when you're mad, when you're scared. Um, and for some people though, that emotional hunger can result in seeking food for the comfort that it provides, um, resulting in emotional eating. Now, keep in mind, everybody emotionally eats on occasion. That is normal. You just ate a meal celebrating somebody's birthday and somebody brings out a birthday cake and you have a piece. No big deal. Emotional hunger doesn't have to result in emotional overeating. Eating is just one way to cope, um, but is it your only strategy? For me, I have uh, other strategies now to cope, but when I was a kid, eating was my only coping strategy. It was my first addiction, really, food, um, until I got old enough to drink and do drugs, but that's a whole nother story. Celebrating 34 years of sobriety, thank you. Um, as an adult, though, not having the coping strategies um, other than eating and overeating can result in shame and guilt and, um, and maybe even some unwanted weight gain. I'm going to be diving deeper into um, some skills regarding emotional hunger um, in an upcoming video, so make sure that you're a subscriber so you get notification of that video. I want to help you. So do me a favor. When you have the desire to eat, I want you to think, is it belly hunger, real physical hunger, or is it head hunger? that emotional hunger. Change begins with awareness. And when you recognize what's going on, you'll be in a better position to change your behavior. So start to pay attention to that. If you need some help, let me know. Information is in the description. In my next video, I wanna introduce you to my hunger and fullness scale. It's a, a, a tool that I use with myself and with my clients. It's a very useful tool to helping you navigate um, hunger and fullness. Um, so. Yeah, make sure that you uh, that you watch that. And uh, thanks for watching, Neely on Nutrition. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.